Our next speakers are graffiti artist Chor Boogie and Yogi, not graffiti artist, sorry. Modern hieroglyphics, and you can see them on the um, right, right out on the trailer, right outside of the foam tent, or right over here. Um, and we have Elizabeth Bath, who is the author of. Sorry, I lost the book. Where is it? Uh, Heart Medicine. The author of Heart Medicine: A True Love Story, and they're going to be talking about the sacred healing of Iboga and what they've learned in Gabon with the Buidi tribe. Thank you, Ron. Yeah. Hello, beautiful people. Wow. My name is Elizabeth Bast Mbei. There's only one microphone. My name is Chor Boogie Niangu. Hello, how are you guys doing? Oh, oh, go ahead. She'll lead it off. Mm. I would like to lead it off with a moment of gratitude for plant medicine. Yeah! Thank you. Mm. Thank you, plants. Take a breath and... We love you. Bring that into your awareness, whether or not you've had experiences, just what it's doing for the collective right now when it's held in a good way. Basi. Mm -hmm. So thank you to Iboga. Thank you to our ancestors who have been with us really strong. And thank you to Binana. Binana Kanganga and Mokodi who are supporting us and sharing and Mama with Nunu. you with conversation. Lots of Lot, lots of blessings and support from Africa coming here. And Mama Nunu. That's Mokodi. <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. Sorry. I'm a bit tired. Everyone has like three nicknames in Africa. Yeah. They have like their French name, their Buiti name, and uh, their nickname. So, like here. <laughs> so, about five years ago, maybe closer to six, the love of my life shared with me that he'd had a heroin relapse and he was in injecting. We'd been together six years. He was really sober when I met him, very militantly sober. It was a big change, it was a big shock. Um, and just by raise of hands here, who's ever loved someone who's been in a real deep addiction? Wow. Yeah, that's with a lot of us. I was sho shocked, just shell-shocked. Uh, and terrified and never imagined I would be with someone who was putting that in their body. I didn't know what to do. So I went into nature the next day. Who else talks to trees? <laughs> yeah. I went into nature, and I was praying, and I was asking for help from the nature spirits. And it was like a star just dropped down through my crown, and it said, Iboga. And in that moment, I didn't know how I knew about it. I, did, I couldn't remember where I'd heard about it or that it was good for addiction. It was like that plant was remembering me and him. And it was quite a roller coaster to get out to that first treatment. There was a lot of uh, being on the edge, of choosing life or death. And something in him got him there. And then I also experienced the medicine as well for my own purposes, for PTSD. It's something I'd struggled with for a long time. And so I did it for my own reasons there and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen when I could barely recognize him the night before he went in and the next day I could see his soul again really clearly like he'd had also like 10 facials in a row and his eyes were clear and he was like <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it was like um, the rebirth, you know, unplugging from the matrix, it's just little, um, just connect, rebirth, back into life. Within 24 hours, I was a new being, human being. And when I got up, the first thing that I said was, I love my life. And that was one of the most greatest feelings I've ever had in my life. And I went and picked up the shaman and like fucking gave him a big ass hug. And like, thank you, thank you. And I, and I just couldn't believe it. Like something this, something like this, this plant from this earth that can transform somebody's whole soul within 24 hours. And I was never really about this type of stuff, not at all, never. I was militant about being sober because before I relapsed, I was like 15 years clean on my own. And, um, you know, the, that basically apparently wasn't good enough. And so it, it basically led me to Iboga, that relapse. Mm. And from there, like I said, within 24 hours, it's a new man. Reborn, mm. and I love my life. Mm. And that's what, that's what the gift that these plants, they, they, they give us, you know, they show us this, this love, this, this, this wholehearted love to give ourselves so we can give to Everybody else, others. Basi, basi, as we say in Africa. Basi, basi. Who's, basi, who's, basi. Who gave us a basi, basi? basi. <laughs> so what they say is truth, word, I am here. Yes. <laughs> so, so with that, uh, the end of the ceremony was just the beginning. Was just the beginning of a whole lot of practice. I mean, the medicines really help us. They're, they're wind beneath our wings. They give us neuroplasticity. But it's not a magic pill. This guy worked. He's still working. We're still working every day. I want to draw attention to this piece over here. This is one of the first images Chor painted, the love dance, when he was filled with iboga. <laughs> Came home, detoxed. Um, you can just take that in. That's the spirit of Iboga. So beautiful. So, so is not a magic pill, right? And the piece that is missing from a lot of psychedelic research is tribe, community. Like these Ibogaine treatments that people go in in a clinic with people who they don't know alone and come back to the same toxic environment, that's a setup. It's not a magic pill. You know, when you're surrounded by people who love you, who will support you through the integration process and remind you of your visions and remind you of your sacred name. We need tribe, tribes within tribes, which is, within tribes, which is what Entheo Generation and Foam Home is doing right now, here, making tribes, you know, um, in a good way, in right relationship. So we were really touched by that. We went, ended up going to Africa three times for really deep immersive trainings. That's a really complex medicine. That's, they use it for diagnosis and prescription and x-rays and like, it's some amazing stuff that it's a very sophisticated, complex, tricky medicine. So I just wanna share a little harm reduction with the time that we have. A lot of people are really desperate for healing and really curious about healing, and iboga is a really tricky medicine. Medically, there's a different protocol for many different kinds of substances, SSRIs, benzos, methadone, suboxone, opiates, all different. And with these kinds of uh, detoxes, root bark alone won't do it. And you gotta have a medical professional there, you gotta have an EKG, like it's, Complex, and I want to say that there's a resource page on my website with a lot of safety tips. If it's in good hands, it's a really safe medicine. 
So look on my website at ebast.net. Again, that's ebast.net, and you can see um, a lot of great information that'll keep you safe. And sourcing, so people are ordering iboga on the internet from people they don't know. And what we learned in Africa was that the medicine is so sensitive to the energy with which it is handled and harvested and processed. In Africa, they go to sing to the plant. They ask a permission ritual and sing to the plant and take only what they need with their bare hands in a ceremony and cover the rest. And some of those plants are living 30 to 70 years and that medicine gets so sophisticated. So sustainable and ceremonially harvested medicine is like beautiful and I like to know the people whose hands have taken that out of the earth. That's source. Not just getting it on a dark web, like the consumer mentality. I'm hoping we can come into a student mentality, a devotee mentality with these plants instead of just what can I take, but going in like, what can I give back also, right? Um, and some iboga on the internet has been associated with elephant poachers. Elephants eat iboga. So we want to be really careful about what we're supporting and it's about networks, friendship, you know, developing relationships. So, and then the daily practice. Oh, look, oh my gosh. <laughs> Bring up magic. You got it. You got it? Can we, where's the clicker? Is, is this working? Ah, okay, so this is where we wound up. But this is where we started. And it's also a stunning work of art, right? But what is this showing you? Like, what is the transmission there? And this was painted really close to the time of relapse. Yeah, definitely was painted uh, around that time. You know, it, it, it shows definitely the twisted dimensions going on within, you know, coming out subconsciously. And it's, it's a fucking mind fuck. That's what it is. Ah, uh, to this. And then, we, we go to more, yes, yeah, you could turn on, is there another one? Yeah. Oh, there it is, that's a, that's a better one. Yeah, you know, I did this for my grandmother when she passed, but um, I started focusing more on the love that came through me, through my artwork. As you can see with that piece over there, with the, sh with the sh uh, young shaman dancing through the cosmos, um, he has hearts coming out of his third eye. So when I was in my um, visual experience, uh, my truth with Iboga, I had to thin off the darkness, fight the darkness within. There was a lot of dark shit going on inside. And from heart, mind, body, and soul, dark, like the nothing, just plagued the entire being. Um, I had to figure out a way to get rid of it and fight it off. And from there, I like became this like superhero or something. It was like, I called him Love Man. You know, and he had a freaking, and like Superman had this thing, it was just like a, like a big heart and shit right here. And I would shoot out hearts, like just shooting out from my heart and from my third eye and just attacking all this darkness just, and then I just started noticing the darkness just lightening and lightening and lightening up, but it was still there. And I was like, you know what? I need to do uh, something else. So I had to like, figure out a way to get rid of, get rid of it. 
So I decided, and this like trash can appeared, and I started grabbing it. It was like very realistic, and it's just like a sign that said like negativity, drugs, or whatever. Threw it in the trash can. wasn't good enough. Poured gasoline on it. Set it on fire. wasn't good enough. Then like a grenade formed in my hand, and I freaking fucking blew it up. Boom. And just started, I was like, that's it. I just started grabbing, grabbing, grabbing all this negativity and all this darkness, throwing in the, throwing in the bin, blowing it up. Video game of consciousness evolution. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost done. Go ahead. Um, so here we are in Africa. We get to trek in the jungle and we go. We're going to go next summer. You can come with us. Mm. Um, they want visitors, they want to be in communication, they awesome. want to be in the, in the conversation with scientists. Um, their lineage is so intelligent. Uh, they have this music that's amazing, maybe we'll end with that if it's there. Uh, okay. Um, they're, uh, Gabon. Gabon, yeah. Um, so the community piece. They go in for these deep initiations held by 20 people they love. You know, it's, it's really amazing um, how they connect. Yeah, there's another love, love piece I did for my mother when she transitioned to the cosmos. I just want to say, um, I've really learned, like, we're still practicing every day. Every day, all the lessons, every all the day. messages. And, and it's constant work every day. It's not going to stop. And head cleaning, like <laughs> meditation and yoga and connecting and talking with people you love. Like that's, we can't do this alone, guys. <laughs> we need you and we're all here in this together. And, you know, addiction is an initiation. It's the wound that the light can enter from. Do you all feel that? Like addiction is an initiation. We want to take the stigma out. When someone has an addiction, they're looking for medicine, right? They're just trying to get medicine. And it brings yeah, there's like boga, wild at boga in the jungle. So I hope we can, as a collective, all start lifting the stigma around addiction and move it to healthcare, move it away from criminalization. Love each other. It's just people trying to get medicine for something, right? Let's get them real medicine. <laughs> so we were doing a lot of work, um, hopefully creating more access. We just participated in the decriminalize a nature campaign in Oakland. Are you aware of that? And it took a tribe. It took a big, beautiful, committed tribe. And at least on a microcosmic level, people won't go to jail for using plant medicines safely. Most, most of the big ones. Uh, talk about this? How are we doing on time? Okay, I'm gonna take questions. Ten minutes. I'm gonna take questions now. All right, got a question? Yes. Oh yes, um, and I do have a few books like to give away. So if you want to meet me right outside there, I'll do my best to get you one. I I love hearing you speak from the aboga perspective. Um, I'm an MD. I work with ibogaine patients in Mexico. Um, not a lot, just I do it in service. And I, I'm wondering how you see, because of biotech companies and you know wanting to take the hallucinogenic component out, which we know it doesn't work, out of ibogaine. So what do you see for the future of um, this medicine coming into the American Western field with tribe, with community, with ritual, with intention, because that's not how biotech companies work. So. <laughs> uh, so how do we see Iboga coming in 
to our society, well, we're bringing some elders here is our plan. We're bringing some elders here hopefully in January to speak on the West Coast and there's going to be more and more sharing where Buiti elements are available. Um, we're, we love the tradition for a lot of reasons and see a lot of deep, deep study over eons for this medicine, like even the music. Like even the music has been studied um, to bring the, the, the mind to the theta state. It's incredible like what they're, what they're doing. So bringing them here, cross-cultural conversation, harm reduction talks. Um, I would love to see iboga growing in Hawaii and Costa Rica um, and anywhere that is tropical and non-invasive. We need to, you know, it's, it's uh, there's sustainability issues in Africa. And by the way, Africa is burning right now also with the Amazon. So let's just be aware of what's going on. Um, so for the future, yes, it's, I would like to see iboga grown sustainably. And I also see a big conversation between ibogaine and iboga. And what we're seeing as like a, a good ibogaine medical detox first with like really good medical care helps people to think clearly enough to really appreciate the depth and the profundity and the richness of the total alkaloid medicine that think clearly enough to make intentions and that's what that's what we're advocating for right now at this point you know he, he was he had a unique situation um, with total alkaloid extract detox uh, but we're all in favor of the sustainably produced Ibogaine medical treatments first. Yeah, is that, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you. So my question's on the detox itself uh, for, for you. I work at a methadone clinic um, as a substance use counselor there for people trying to get off heroin as well. One of the main reasons people continue to use is to avoid the withdrawal symptoms with, depending on their habit, how long they've been using, off of heroin can last for weeks, off of methadone can last for months, can last a long time. What is it like with Ibogaine? What was your detox process and how does it compare? So for the most part, for the most part, Iboga and Ibogaine can mitigate withdrawal symptoms. Yeah, for most people, for most people, occasionally there's some discomfort at first. Someone might not be completely 100% detoxed in one treatment. Sometimes people need two treatments and a really safe space to go into after, <laughs> in aftercare. Um, yeah, but it does tend to mitigate. Um, I basically, what I would do would, here, hold that, would, my process would probably be a little bit more brutal, but I would like actually have them detox before they approach any medicine. Ibogaine or Iboga, whether it's three days or three months, they should detox before they approach the medicine. They know how to get sick. They, they, that was their way of life. So they know pain. They're, they're accustomed to pain. It's just a cop out when they don't want to have that pain so if they understand pain then they know how to go through it especially if they're putting their self, putting themselves through it make sense they should detox detox that's what I did before I went to go do iboga was heavily detox for two weeks straight going to the gym, whatever, you know, sweating in a sauna, you know, detox. And you know what, and I still, uh, when, uh, I, when I had my first journey, the shaman was like, oh, you're still detox. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you know, I detoxed two weeks before I came here. And he's like, no, you're detoxing like past, past, lies, whatever, all that shit way beyond, but you're detoxing still. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, but. That's my best advice for that. A few more questions. Wait, just uh, one more note on that great question. So he did have a little while where I was like feeding him actually a little wachuma first. Um, and there's things now like, so, so it's true, the cleaner you go into the medicine, the more it's going to give you. 
However, there are people that get helped, like rolling off the plane with their last hit. That's true. That's available. But it gives you more when you go in cleaner. The medicine really loves that offering. And there's also things like combo. Combo that can help like, like really carefully step down from a lot of different medications. So look up combo. <laughs> okay, one more. I've done Ibog I've done Ibogaine. Yeah. It was amazing. But uh, I'm wondering what the full spectrum the difference experience is, is like. Um, the difference between Ib Iboga and Ibogaine is that they're extracting Ibogaine out of Iboga, correct? So you're, you're taking out one alkaloid. Right. So, so when, when you do the, the Iboga, when you do Iboga, the full dose, you're doing 13 alkaloids. Right. So you're missing, yeah, you're missing 12 others, right? So the experience is completely different. So also on that note, and we'll wrap, when then we're done? One more, one more question. Okay. Uh, so those alkaloids definitely work in a symphony. And there's some of those other alkaloids have benefits for pain reduction and inflammation. Um, the medicine is great for things like candida, uh, fungal issues, like it covers a lot of ground and all those other alkaloids are, are really incredible. And from what I understand from people who have done both, who have experienced both, that they say that the total alkaloid medicine in ceremonial doses is a much richer experience. And yet, ibogaine is still meaningful and helpful and a great step, for sure. One more question? Yeah, so uh, I think a really interesting part of your story is that you had such a long time that you were sober um, on your own volition and then had a relapse and then found the benefit from the iboga. And so what I'm wondering is people that have been sober for several years um, but did have a history of use and maybe still kind of feel that urge inside of them, I'm wondering if you think that iboga would be helpful for those people as well that aren't actively you know, in addiction and in using at the time. Of course. Book is good for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you very much, Chur and Elizabeth. Thank you.